Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining our talk, uh, and it's great to be here at PyCon again. Um, today, I will uh, present my talk with my co-speaker, um, Sami Adnan. Uh, he's a digital uh, health designer and a doctoral candidate at the University of Oxford. He's doing his research uh, on the use of AI in healthcare. Um, my name is Samara Shermin. I'm a resident surgeon uh, in Berlin, uh, in St. Uh, Joseph Hospital, and doing my doctoral candidate as a um, uh, RWTH Aachen University. I'm doing my research on um, post-operative outcome. We will be introducing um, human-centered AI design using Python. Uh, we'll show some examples from real world uh, settings and talk about challenges, best practices in healthcare. But we will mostly talk about how to use a health um, explainable AI uh, implementation uh, framework. So when uh, it comes to solving challenges, um, in case of healthcare, um, the use of AI can be extremely helpful, but AI needs to be human-centered. According to uh, Professor um, um, Schneiderman, um, it means that we should amplify, augment, enhance, and empower human capabilities. This is why uh, integration of design is very important when we um, talk about human-centered AI. It is essential to design a solution before its deployment, which can allow um, tailored approach to um, patient needs and clinical outcomes. There are many interacting um, aspects um, for uh, interacting aspects for uh, creating digital health solution, um, like uh, different stakeholders, like patients, researchers, and developers, uh, should think about human values, individual goals, and um, their design aspirations uh, while creating a, di a digital health uh, solution. They should also consider threats like bias and software flaws. Explainable artificial intelligence plays a very uh, strong role in uh, designing healthcare solution, uh, where, PyCon, uh, where Python is a very powerful tool. Explainable AI uh, addresses very crucial aspects uh, relevant to healthcare, uh, such as transparency, accountability, governance, and uh, ethics. Here is an example from um, our AI model. Um, this is an example uh, where Python was used to understand a problem, why our AI model was not working. So um, this AI model was performing very well in a training and testing, but had very poor real world results. To understand the problem, Python was used. And a saliency map showed um, the highlighting areas um, which influenced the model uh, to make its decision. This helped um, the developers to fix the problems. The problem was the model was uh, training itself on pen marks from the radiologist. Now if I go back, uh, maybe you can see the pen marks where the model was training on. There is an, another example uh, of explainable AI where um, it um, helped us to create new knowledges. We as physicians, we cannot predict sex from retinal image. But uh, AI model predicted sex from different same 
images from retina. And um, we can see uh, upwards uh, from the highlights. Uh, this was the information from the saliency map, uh, which helped the model's prediction. Now my co-speaker, um, Sami, will talk to you about implementing AI solution in healthcare. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming and it's great to be back. Uh, so I'll be talking about the health uh, explainable AI implementation framework. It's for AI deployment at scale in healthcare systems using Python. And um, with scale, I mean we're, the research data set that I'm working on um, is a population-based data set in the UK from CPRD, which uh, has 60 million patients. So uh, as Samara was giving the example of that AI model or machine learning model that was trying to detect pneumonia or let's say COVID, uh, we're talking about one model uh, that is predicting one clinical parameter. So it can be um, uh, detecting a tumor, it can be um, detecting, uh, analyzing ECG and so on. But then as developers, you might also have different models looking at the same clinical parameter. And also you might have, so this is, this is one of the challenge in healthcare settings, that you also have multiple models looking at multiple, multiple clinical parameters. So scaling of the whole development, uh, deployment, maintenance, and also monitoring is a very challenging task. So, um, and this gets even more complicated when it's across institutions or countries. Uh, there are different regulatory um, uh, hurdles to cross. Uh, there might be different governance structures. Um, so this is even more complex when that happens. And that's why we're actually very excited to um, introduce the um, implementation framework. Uh, actually, we're publishing it. We just uh, published it today on the preprint server. So you can also access the entire paper. Um, we'll also be making the slides available uh, at the end of the talk. Um, so it is a four-step uh, process. In the beginning, uh, because this is based on reinforcement learning, uh, we need to find parameters that are going to be used as reward functions. So from each uh, machine learning instance, we want to have a privacy parameter and a clinical value. So these two uh, data points are going to be used for the reinforcement learning steps. And um, when, uh, in order to do that, so we have multiple models that are being evaluated. Um, we're using bandit learning to rank the model performance. We'll go more into details um, in a bit. Um, and then there's the third step is validation where we're looking at the model interpretation. So like Samara was saying that uh, explainable or explainability of models is important for healthcare. So this is a, a part of the framework that allows us to uh, evaluate the explainability. And then the last step is the model orchestration uh, where we want, where, where we can implement on a large scale. So if you think about the health system in the UK, like NHS, um, you might have a model that's been developed centrally and then distributed to all the um, hospitals or um, clinics. And actually this is similar for any other country, um, depending on the healthcare system. Um, to go back to the uh, first part where we get the information from the models. Um, if you think about the uh, very normal machine learning uh, pipeline, uh, you have the data processing and pre-processing and then it goes through different steps. The difference here is that we want to have um, this privacy layer optimization, which means that uh, 
during the pre-processing, there should be some sort of a privacy um, budget or privacy score that needs to be uh, given as an output so that um, the bandit learning model can use that as a re reward function. And the second part relevant for healthcare is the clinical uh, values. So what clinical parameter is this model uh, trying to predict? And, and then um, those two information are sent for the reinforcement learning part. And to show that, so this is an algorithm that tries to com compare the um, different models that are competing. So if you have, let's say, uh, three different models looking for um, mortality rate, how are these models going to be ranked? So that's where the super arms generator comes in. And this is a um, bandit learning algorithm. Um, so you can imagine that if you have 10 different models, each of them will be compared with each of them. So there will be a lot of uh, combinations to compare. And at the end, um, the algorithm gives the best matching pair. And then again, so this is a three-step process. And in our paper, you can read more details about how and exactly which algorithms are used um, or what the um, uh, formula is. But the idea is to have these two different um, reward functions again combined to create a f um, main reward function. Because the thing with uh, bandit learning or reinforcement learning is that it uh, optimizes on the reward functions. And this framework gives um, you the idea how you can do that. Um, okay, and for the... Um, Explainable uh, part, so these are already existing ways how explainable AI is being done. But if you follow this um, framework, you can decide which ones to use and for which model, which approach should be taken. And this is more for developers uh, in the audience who are interested in uh, dealing with healthcare uh, problems but also for healthcare professionals who want to um, have clinical insights. So you can choose what kind of um, interpretation you want to have in your models. And this is uh, therefore a way to bridge the two worlds so that um, using this framework, you can uh, decide on which approach you want to go with. And of course, this is a, a very general one so that as we develop more explainable AI tools, we can uh, further expand this. And the last part is for uh, ML ops. So like when I was saying that you have huge data sets with 60 million patients and also multiple models that are being used across different institutions, um, it's, it's important to have a very well-structured system that can handle with all these changes. So if you, if you are having multiple developer teams in different countries or different sites, they can all use a big uh, like or orchestration platform to deploy these models and also then maintain and manage the models. And this is just a... Um, idea of, for example, if you have a master um, instance where you have all the approved models and then you can send, depending on the needs, to the different um, um, clinics or hospitals, you can then send uh, individual models that have been uh, vetted or updated. And so, um, this, oh, sorry. this is the uh, paper that we've uh, uploaded today, and um, it, it gives you more of the details that we just introduced, uh, but we are also very interested in knowing about the developers' uh, needs. So 
if you have more challenges that you want to discuss, feel free to uh, get in touch with us. And um, also follow us because we are going to uh, publish some more interesting insights about uh, evaluating these AI models. So this framework gives you the theoretical, um, let's say, um, tools to develop um, a system. And our next project is where we're doing the testing of this. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how developers who are using these tools um, think of, of this idea. And um, to end, it's that technology is always um, an iterative process, and design is very important. So if you think about the printing press or the automobile and the early surgeries, we've come a long way. And it depends on how we design these tools. So hopefully this implementation framework will help uh, developers to further um, design better solutions for healthcare. And uh, we're a team of uh, interdisciplinary researchers. So uh, if you want to collaborate with us, um, get in touch for research or outreach. Um, and yeah, that's it. So any questions? Uh, any questions? In the second row. Can you raise your hand? Yes, actually, uh, when you mentioned about the distributed, right, especially for training, I'm thinking like if you dealing with multiple hospitals and especially country, right, with different re regulation, how are you managed to do that? It's like, is there anything like uh, federated learning are you implementing? Um, so do you mean um, the tools, exact tools for the... Um, yeah, either the tools or yeah. any kind of software. Or um, so the um, framework that we introduced is um, dynamic in the sense that you can, you're, you should be able to use it in any setting um, and using any tools uh, because this is more like an implementation framework for um, people who are deciding, let's say, if, so this goes even before developing anything, so when you're uh, starting a project, um, having this will help you to decide on these tools, so like how you are going to set up um, the deployment, the development, and so on. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, maybe I can check later on the more okay. details. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, any more questions? Yeah. Hi. Um, I understand what you, when you say like explainability is vital in the healthcare industry, um, but uh, inherently, um, like deep neural networks, uh, you know, they they're not explainable per se. Like we're still working on trying to figure out yeah. how they come up with the answer. So, from my understanding, this you've got like a many, many specialized models trained with reinforcement learning, and then you use a banded algorithm to choose the best one out of those, on the, depending on the application. Is that correct? Is that where the explainability comes from? Like um, no. So, well, in a way, yes. So the framework uses banded learning or reinforcement learning just to um, rank the models. But the input can be anything. So it can be a deep learning uh, model. It can be, let's say, LSTM or um, like any different types of models. And then regardless of the type of the model, it can uh, rank the outcome. So for example, let's say uh, we have three different models for predicting uh, a lung tumor. 
and they have different accuracies. So when we go here, sorry, yeah. So in order to, because you're right that of course deep learning uh, neural networks are very, like it's a black box, so we don't know how the decision is being made. But then if we want, uh, if we focus on the output that it's giving, so let's say if we have three different models, they can all three be deep learning models, like even same, but they might have different accuracies. And that's what we're trying to target with the bandit learning algorithm, so that in a vast um, collection of models, we don't have to manually choose which one is better, but we also have a objective thing that we can grab onto. So for the physicians, it's, it's already a big help if uh, we can say that, okay, the accuracy is, let's say, 80% because of this parameter. So that parameter is important. Uh, but of course, this is not 100%, like it's not making a white box out of a black box. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? We still have 10 minutes. No, no questions. Okay, if there are no further questions, like thank you once again, Sami and uh, Samra, for a wonderful uh, time and uh, you know, delivering talk for us. We really appreciate. Thank you. <laughs>